there was one thing that, that stood out to me. And if this is completely wrong, my memory here, we might cut this out. But you last time we spoke, you were three thousand something connections. Yeah. That's twelve hundred and what? Four thousand. I have four thousand three hundred and something or something like that. Yeah. Well, not quite. Not quite twelve hundred, but that's like seven hundred connection and a little over a month. I go. I go off. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome back to the business library. Yes, that is a new name for the show. A lot shorter than the old one. And today I have Brandon Drake on. Uh, We're still missing Mike, but Brandon, he's known as the healthy data guy. Because he has a bit of background in health, as you can probably see, he's quite fit. And then also, he's a data guy. He does CRM work, and he's very, very good at it. I love his personal touch on how he does CRM. But just to start us off, why don't you put some words on who the healthy data guy is, Brandon? Yeah, so the healthy data guy, um, you know, I made up that name because, like you said, I have a background in in health uh, and also to a background in uh, computer information systems and data analysis, combine them together, I am the healthy data guy. <laughs> so the, the way it worked is I initially quit my corporate job in 2016. I was uh, working for a CRM company on the data migration side. So that's why I'm the data guy. But I was very overworked in my job. The last six months of my work, I was always working 10, 11, 12 hours for six months straight. And I was very just tired, overrun, and I felt like I didn't have a really good work and, and personal life. And I really wanted to change that. And so I was sick of technology at that time. And I thought to myself, you know what? I can't wait to quit this job. I can't wait to quit technology because I don't want to deal at all with it. Um, and so I quit that job and I did something totally different. I went to a holistic nutrition and culinary arts school, functional nutrition school, hence the the healthy side of my healthy data guy was born, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and during that process, you know, I, I'm glad I went through that process because it made me reprioritize my life and making sure that health was a foundation of everything that I do. Like my self care was a high priority, you know, like you have to take care of yourself before you're able to efficiently take care of everybody else and do the things that you love doing, whether it's with your friends, family, uh, the work that you do. Uh, so that was very important to me. And during that process, you know, after going to school, I was a therapeutic personal chef, a functional nutritionist, and I was either cooking for people or coaching people depending on their location and focusing on people that had metabolic issues like heart attack, stroke, prediabetes, diabetes, hypertension, something that's very pre- prevalent, at least in the United States. Uh, and so I felt like I was doing something with purpose and meaning, and I really liked that. But during my, my journey, uh, like I liked networking. And through my networking, that's how I attain a lot of my clients. And I was really all about relationship building, you know, because when you develop trust within yourself and within other people, they tend to want to flock to and want to know more about you. And sometimes those people turn into customers. Sometimes they can turn into just good referral partners where we could collaborate together. But during that process, one of my really good networking partners, he said, Brandon, you're really good at keeping track of all your customers and, and your networking partners and your prospects. And I told him, yeah, I mean, I went to school for a computer you know, data <laughs> analysis and I work for a CM company. So it's kind of natural really for me to be able to be good at that. And so uh, he said, hey, can you, my business is growing. And he asked me, can you be a CRM consultant for me? In my head, I said no immediately in my head, but I really liked him. And, you know, we were good referral partners. And the reason why I said in my head, I was like, no, I don't want to do that work because I was doing that type of work in corporate. And that's the reason why I quit my job to do something totally different. And I was happy with in the health space. And so I told them, this is about nine months ago, I told them, look, let me think about it on the weekend, because it was Friday when he asked me. So he pulled it on me, I was totally by surprise, you know, and said, let me think about it on the weekend, and I'll get back to you. So I thought about it, I wrote up a quote for him. I sent to him on Monday, on Tuesday, we had a meeting, I knew exactly what he needed. And this is how I thought it was gonna happen. Like, I thought he was gonna say something along the lines of, oh, that's that price is too high. And I was going to say, you know what, this is the price I'm going to stay at. And then it wasn't going to work out. And then we're going to be going back to just being good referral partners. Well, it didn't happen like that at all. (laughs) That was my imagination of how it was going to happen. But basically, when it came to the point of negotiation, he didn't even negotiate. He said, I want to work with you. And I was totally thrown off guard. I was like, oh, dang, he I didn't I didn't expect this to happen. (laughs) (laughs) I I should have. have. (laughs) <laughs> it's all of a sudden uh, 
Oh, not a six, let's put a nine. Yeah, I'm gonna turn the page around. <laughs> oh no, that page is the wrong way. Yeah. Yeah. And so I said, you know what? I told him, you know what, let's let's do a one month trial to make sure it's a right fit for both of us. And really I was saying, let's do a one month trial to make sure that this is the type of work I want to do again. Because this is what I did in corporate. And I wasn't sure if I really wanted to go about doing it. I was good at it. But I, at that time, I just hated it and didn't want to do it ever again. <laughs> but what made it easy because my referral partner, my networking partner who wanted to become my client was a really good person. And so I, I thought, OK, maybe it'll work out. And so we worked together a couple of days later. I set up a one hour session with him to train him in his CRM. And it lasted for an hour and a half. And I realized, wow, I actually I actually really like this work. I liked it. And and then I realized that. When I was in corporate, the reason why I thought I hated technology was because the environment that I was in was very, I guess, very negative, meaning it was very transactional with my clients. I was forcing a solution down somebody's throat and moving on to the next person. They're treated like numbers. I had quotas to meet every week and every month. I had people above me saying I have to work faster. And I was like, man, I'm working fast. Like I'm working 10, 11 hours a day. Like how much could I work, you know? And so it was their environment that drove me away from technology. And it wasn't the technology that I hated. But at that time, I just thought I want to get away from all that. And now with my client and my other other clients as well, like when I do CRM work for them, like there's nobody above me saying I have to go faster. I get to make my own terms, treat my clients the way I want to treat them, really get to know them, their business, their challenges, and then come up with a tailored solution in order to meet their needs rather than like forcing a solution down their throat. That's not like, that's not my style at all. And that's why I like what I do. You know, I like the relationship and the collaborative partnership that I have with my clients, but I just have that skill set of technology to help them streamline and grow their business, which makes it so much better. Just the whole process is what I like. You know, uh, I just happen to know technology and CRMs, but I like the the, the communication piece and the, the the collaborative and strategic piece that I have with my clients. And that's something I couldn't do in the corporate world. I just had to treat them like numbers, move on to the next, move on to the next, go, 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 you know, really, really fast. And now I get to take my time and work on my own terms, which is great. On most corporate situations, you are just numbers. Everybody's just numbers in that situation. Yeah, everybody gets carried away with, with numbers where they get rid of the relationship building. They just really care about the transactional piece, counting numbers, uh, the KPIs, what are all those reports or whatever, make sure you meet your, your quota every week, every month. And like, everybody's so, so hooked on those numbers that it, it loses the human touch with your clientele. And I don't want to lose that in, in, in my work that I do. And I don't, that's why I like what I do because I'm not losing the human touch in the digital, digital age, because we're so, you know, we're so like, um, into the electronic world that sometimes we lose that human connection and like, yeah, I'm in technology, but at the same time, I do not want to lose a human connection that I have with my networking partners, my customers and my prospects. So that actually leads beautifully into what I want to talk about, because that's what I think you, you do well is you use technology to make the connection more human in a way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what, how do you go about actually making that human connection? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it first starts off with, you know, having a conversation with somebody because, you know, a lot of people do the marketing thing and it's very cold outreach to people that don't even know who you are. You know, um, when I first started a couple, two and a half years ago in terms of networking, it's really having that those one-on-one -on -one introductions to one another uh, warming up to one each other, getting to know each other on a personal basis and on a business basis. And when you create that warmth and that connection, then you have a person that's going to support you if they align with your values. And I've done that thousands of times <laughs> <laughs> so, because I have about uh, close to 5,000 people in my CRM database that I actually do know who they are. Uh, they're either networking partners, customers, or prospects. And it, it in the beginning, it's a lot of work. Like people don't see like the amount of work behind the scene, just with anything like that's, over, it seems like it's overnight success. No, it's not overnight success. It's a lot of hard work, but I really like connecting with people and having that initial conversation and seeing if we're fully aligned with one another. Like I really like community oriented people 
really want to take the time to learn about each other so that we could see how we could support one another. Like I said, very community oriented. And when I know that they pass that test, like I want to be part of what they do. I want to contribute to the growth of their business. And because of I'm, I'm contributing to the growth of their business, that's when the reciprocation comes where they're going to contribute to your business as well. And the way I've done that is obviously I keep track of all my contacts within my CRM. And when you get to a certain amount of contacts, you have to have a CRM to be able to automate that, um, that those connections. When I say automate connections, it's like, for example, I meet somebody, maybe they're my 4,128th person that I met, right? You know, <laughs> so how am I going to keep track of that particular individual amongst all my other people? Well, I have a process in place where I send them an email, I thank them for their time. Like I have a template email, but I customize it accordingly. So it's not like a, uh, I'm not, it's it's not like a automatic email that they get because we all get these automatic emails, mass emails, and you could tell that it's not personal. Like you could totally tell. So I, I start off with a template, but then I modify that template according to what we talked about. And they know that it's not some automated message that where I didn't put any thought into it. So that's part of the human connection piece. Yeah, I'm using technology. I'm using a template, but then I'm using my human connection by customizing the message according to what we talked about. And then I'm more likely to get engagement because they're like, oh, wow, he really listens to me. And the one thing that I do is when I connect with a really good referral partner, I'll ask them to, to write in their bio about who they are and what they do and save it to my database because now I could keep track of them and know exactly what they do. And when I find somebody that's a good introduction for them, I use their bio to not rep misrepresent who they are and what they do. And now when I introduce them, they're very impressed to see that, wow, Brandon, remember what I do. Yeah, I kind of remember what you do, but I use my system to remember truly what you do so I could really represent who you truly are. When I make the introduction, you know, that's how I've been able to make really, really good introductions because I, my system and my process that I created remembers what each person does. So I fully represent who they are when I'm introducing somebody to them in my network. And then from there, it's up to them to take take it away but they're very thankful that i'm able to make that connection and because I've, i'm very good at making those connections down the line it's turned out to generate business for me because people will remember what i do and they end up giving me referrals as well so so it, it you have to have a really good system in place in order to really create those connections because once you reach over a hundred thousand of people you have to have a system if you don't you're going to forget a lot of things you're going to miss out on so many opportunities that's going to allow you to grow your business and that's how I've been able to differentiate myself from a lot of the competition, from a lot of the people. Because remember, people remember who I are and how how organized I am. They're like, wow, what a great connection, Brandon. Well, yeah, thank you. But you you put it into my system and I'm able to leverage my system to be a good connector. There was one thing that, that stood out to me. And if this is completely wrong, my memory here, we might cut this out. But you last time we spoke, you were 3,000 something connections. Yeah. That's twelve hundred and what? Four thousand. I have four thousand three hundred and something, like, or something like that. Yeah. Well, not quite. Not quite twelve hundred, but that's like seven hundred connection a little over a month. I go. Oh. I go off. <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. Wait, wait. <laughs> okay. Well, that that's more impressive than I thought. Yeah. Um, I mean, to how, me, that is how the hell favorite, do you manage that? That's my favorite piece of my, uh, my CRM that I've, that I've automated in a system behind the scenes that allows me to to be more efficient with my time. Um, so yeah, it's a CRM. The workflows and the automations that I've implemented within my system allows me to do more than the regular person who's just not using a who doesn't have a system in place. Well, you're a definitely doing like, more than me. There's a lot of more people. people. That be, master connectors i never self-proclaim myself as master connector i let other people say that to me if they want but like there's other people that self-proclaim themselves master connectors i would like to talk to them because i want to know what system they have or are they doing everything within their head or are they doing everything within an excel spreadsheet if you're doing that i don't think you're even a close to being a master connector and i'm not calling myself a master connector at all but i really like uh. connecting people i really do enjoy connecting people because that is my my number one method of marketing for me, for me, because, because when I make those connections, people remember who I am and they'll keep me in mind 
top of mind as they are doing their networking because now they're connecting me with other people. Sometimes those people become customers. Sometimes those people become good work, natural referral partners while I still generate business. So that's why I like networking so much because it's just a warm introduction to people. And if you if you remember who they are and what they do, and, and they'll remember you back and want to contribute to your to your cause. Because my my purpose when meeting somebody, as long as they along with my, align with my values, I always want to provide value to them. Uh, I always want to see how I can support them because I'm always trying to bring people into my community. I call it my digital blue zone community. So I don't know what, if you know what blue zones are. Blue zones are the places around no, the world that have the highest percentage of centenarians. Uh, what like, is a centenarian? Uh, centenarians are like Big people that are hundred years old. So there are ah, old people. Blue zones in the world. One of them is Okinawa. Is it Okinawa? Yeah, Japan. Okinawa, Japan? Another place in the island off of Italy. I forget the names of the, some of these places. A place in Costa Rica and a few other places. But the commonality, the common characteristics among all of them are community. They're helping each other. They're actually talking to each other in real life, not through the phone or whatnot. And that's what I want to rec recreate within my community of over 4,000 people and trying to continue to build that so I can create a community of people that are supporting each other, helping each other, actually talking to each other. You know, it might not be in person, but through Zoom, like that's the closest that we could get in terms of making those connections. And so that's what, I, what I'm continually doing and fostering within my community where it's a community of people helping each other. Like I've done, you know, and I'm sure you have, you run into people where you do one-on-ones and they're just in it for themselves. And you could tell it's very selfish. They're either trying to meet a number, they have a quota they have to meet and they don't really care about what you have to say. They just care about them getting their point across so they could try to maybe sell to you or sell to somebody in your network. And I already, I ask those people out of my network. I, I don't deal with them. I cut the meeting short and say, hey, if this is not a meeting, we're going to get to know each other and you're going to sell to me. I'm not, I'm not going to waste my time because I'm not going to refer you to people in my network because I care about people in my network and I don't want them to, to have to me connect them with somebody that's going to sell to them. <laughs> Cause that makes me feel bad too. Like I have, my, my approach is a bit I, different. But, you know, for the most part, if somebody tells me, Hey, that person sells to me, they're out. They're lower on my priority list. <laughs> <laughs> and my approach is a bit different. Um, if you catch me on the right day, I'll just sit there and I'll just play the hardest prospect they ever meet in their life. <laughs> uh, it comes from, yeah, I've, I used to do sales role plays um, with Mike and James and a bunch of other yeah. people. And I learned how to play a hard ass. I used to yeah. play um, um, the, the pe one people really hated. Um, apparently, I made a few people angry with this one. I used to play like a rich brat that was like, had a girlfriend as a model and lift up her and just was so depressed because he didn't have his own life, but people would get mad at that character. <laughs> and I, so sometimes I play into, I'm just throw a few spanners in the works. I'm like, you're going to be in for a workout today, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what you got. I, lo I, lo I love that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, well, the master networkers I've met, um, calling you a master networker but would be a, a fucking understatement. <laughs> uh, we, we have to be in right and not a word. Let us know what you would call somebody that does that many connections down below. I would actually be curious to know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I've never called myself anything. I just let I let my audience call me whatever they call me. Like, you know, like I, I want, like me, I'm all about doing the work taking action and then letting other people's words speak for itself you know like the, it's you know, much more powerful it's yeah. not a person says well brand you, brandon is a master networker means a lot more than if you say i'm a master networker yeah and here's the other thing too that i do this is like maybe you've heard of this i'm not sure i'll ask you though but this is another level of being a uh, you know, a pretty good networker. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, that one, of so, so basically, when people come, when people are added to my CRM, like first of all, they'll get a set of meeting with me. It automatically saves their information to the CRM when they then set up an appointment with me. But after I do a one-on-one -on -one with them, I send them an email thanking for the time. You know, hopefully we could continue to connect and create our connection that gets stronger, so that we could be good referral partners. Now, from there, I actually start measuring their performance. And so you're like, wow, measuring performance. Well. What I'm doing is I'm measuring their engagement. So engagement is how active they are in terms of doing any types of activities associated with engaging with me. So there's something in a CRM. A lot of CRMs have this. It's called 
Have you ever heard of the term called engagement score? Okay, so basically engagement score is basically how how active that person is in terms of communicating with you, whatever activity. So for example, like I've created my own engagement score calculation and it's based on all these different factors according to what I think is important. So for example, say I send an email, they open up the email, give them plus points. Say they reply to my email, give them plus points. Say they subscribe to my email newsletter, give them plus points. Say they unsubscribe, give them negative points. Uh, maybe they <laughs> fill out a specific form on my on my database, give them plus points. Maybe they fill out a form that's even more important than the other form, give them more points. So my system, my CRM system is scoring them based on how they interact with me, you know, within my website, within my CRM. And now after a certain amount of months, you could see how how people are scoring in the CRM. And now, now for me, I could prioritize who I'm going to focus my efforts on. So based on their score. So, so if they're a prospect, if they're opening up all my emails, I know that they're going to have a higher engagement score. And those people are more likely to want to have a conversation and also too more likely to buy. If they're a networking partner, they're opening up my emails. They're, they're more likely to be people that want to learn more about me. And you know what? I'm going to put in the effort to learn more about them. And they're more likely to be good referral partners. So that engagement score is very important because if you have over thousands of people in your database, it's going to be hard to prioritize who you're going to focus your efforts on. And so by in, in creating this engagement score, I'm able to determine who I'm going to prioritize in terms of creating relationships with. Because those people with higher engagement scores are more likely to be people that are going to interact with you if they're a networking partner or be a good referral partner or more likely to buy if they're a prospect. So that's actually a workshop that I'm teaching from uh, uh, on the 26th of July. One of my uh, the founder of a networking group wanted me to do that because he said that's very important to know, Brandon, because, you know, we all have we all meet all these different contacts. It's hard to prioritize who should I focus on if you don't have a system in place, you know. Um Look forward to a bunch of notification. Brandon has been tagged in this post. A clip, 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 a clip. A clip. <laughs> I'm hacking the engagement score. And, and all the people that's watching that's in Brandon's network, hack the engagement score. You're told how to hack it. Well, somebody, I told somebody about it and he said, you know what? You kind of like gamified, gamified it. And I thought about it. I'm like, yeah, actually, I did kind of gamify it. So if somebody knows what, what I'm doing, like people hear this, 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 this talk, they'd be like, oh, I'm in Brandon CRM. I'm going to start replying <laughs> to emails and subscribing to stuff and filling out forms so I could increase my engagement score. Because, you know, if my engagement score is higher, that means that Brandon's going to put more focus on me to see who I could connect you with. So, so yeah, there you go. <laughs> I don't know what it goes up to, but you, you might have to increase the number all of a sudden. Yeah. So here, here's the thing, like, you know, like we automatically, when we meet people, sometimes we make, we make assumptions about people. It's just natural. It's yeah. when we meet somebody, we make assumptions about who they are, what they're all about before even a word comes out of their mouth. Like I met a lady and she was a really nice lady. Um, she was a, she was an energy healer. And so here's the thing. Like I automatically assumed that she wasn't going to be organized. I automatically assumed that she was just, wasn't going to be just really about business and tracking stuff you know because you know th those people the the stereotype amongst those people are like they're just they're, they're in the wind they do whatever whatever is clever whatever happens that's what happens or whatnot so you know she was a nice person after i got off the call with her i sent her an email i figured uh you know she's a nice lady but i don't think she's gonna be a good referral partner so that's okay it was a good conversation and so a couple months later <clears throat> I saw, I looked at my top engagement score people and she was like number one. She was at like, uh, like 390 something. And if if you're good, you're like over 20, but she was like at 390 something. Like she's very active in terms of uh, emailing me, replying to me, subscribing to my messages, filling out forms, giving me referrals. And because of that, I'm making sure I'm matching her energy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I, I want to engage with her because she's contributing to my cause. So I want to fully contribute to her cause. And see, that that's the thing. Like if you didn't, if I didn't have a system in place, I automatically would have thought that, you know what, she's not going to be a good referral partner, but the system proved me wrong. You know, the data doesn't lie, you know? So, so you never can discount certain types of people. And I just, I discounted her, but the system said otherwise. 
and because of that, um, yeah, I make sure that I match people's energy in terms of them being active with me. I want to engage with them back, you know. I like that. It's because we we do have to pick our battles. Yeah. Even though I think, well, you don't want to because you want to have help everybody. At least most people do because you're yeah. you, well, you start a business to solve a problem. At least yeah. most people that do well, they they start a business to solve a problem and not to make money. That's secondary outcome. Mm-hmm. So you can't speak to everybody though, and you you gotta have a roof over your head. Yeah. And this is a yeah. fair way of doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, if a person ever comes to you and asks, well, why am I not getting any referrals? And I'm hearing my friend is getting a bunch of referrals. Like, well, you get your score up. Yeah. I have a quite fair system. Yeah, it's I, I believe in a two-way relationship, not a one-way relationship where somebody's giving, giving, giving. That's just a bad relationship, whether it's an actual relationship in real life or business relationship when one person one side is giving all the time well then what's the point <laughs> you know what i'm saying like you want to have a collaborative relationship where both p- people are giving to one another and those people that have high engagement score are more likely to people that are going to be giving so therefore i want to reciprocate and give back uh so we have to pick and choose especially when our our list of contacts gets bigger and bigger there are going to be people that are just blood suckers or takers and you'll see that I'll see that in the system. Like, I don't have to keep track of it. The system will keep track of it. Like, it'll see, like, when somebody gives me a referral, they get plus points. <laughs> so, the, the, you know, I, I, I'm seeing those people that are, they're really um, putting in the effort. And you know what? I, like I said, I want to master energy and put in the effort and have a really good two, two-way two relationship where we're both contributing to each other's success. You know, I don't want a one-way, one-way relationship. You'll see that in two months' time. You know, after, you know, I've talked talking to somebody, talk to somebody. Yeah. Yeah. You will, well, if, if they don't give anything back. Uh, as you kind of alerted to a little bit earlier, is there a right people to refer people to in the first place if they only take, take, take? So when it comes to networking, like how do... How the fuck do you go out and find 5,000 people? Uh, because I, I've developed a good, um, I developed a good referral partner. I've developed many good referral partnerships with a lot of people. And those people have given me a lot of referrals and I've given them a lot of referrals. And over time, that just builds up like a big, huge tsunami where I don't even have to go to as many networking events that I used to because I build up a good foundation of people that have, that I've identified as being good referral partners. And because of that, they make my calendar filled up all the time without me having to purposely have to go to like a lineable or some random networking event. Yeah. I go to networking events when I have time, but I've noticed I haven't had to go to as many because um, my calendar is being filled by people in my network that are referring me business, referring me collaborative partnerships. So my mm. calendar automatically naturally gets filled up without me having to just go to hundreds of networking uh, events. And if you had to break that in, down to like simple, actionable steps, how would you say you went about it? As simple as possible. Oh, from the beginning? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, from the beginning, I went I went to I went to a lot of networking events to perfect my my pitch. Um in the beginning I made a lot of mistakes, but that's just how we progress and grow, like continue to make those mistakes, learn from them and get your pitch better. Um improve like what you're at, improve having a clear message in terms of what you do, narrow it down to try to narrow it down to one thing. And you don't want to confuse people because you know, there are some people that do multiple things, but you know, I would like, I would usually kind of read the room to see what types of people are there and then pick what one thing I'm going to talk about that I think is going to resonate with most people. So therefore you don't uh, muddy the waters in terms of your message. And then after you give your pitch, be very clear in terms of what you're looking for, like who you're looking to collaborate with. Um, I always, I'm never shooting for my target audience. I'm shooting for 
strategic partners that also work with my target audience. So when I say strategic partners, those are people that do something different from you. So you're not competing, but they cater to a similar target audience as you. You want to connect to those people because if you develop good relationships with those people, sometimes those particular people or strategic partners will refer their clients to you so that you could do business with their clients because you guys are offering complimentary services to one another. And that, that took me time to realize that, hey, I'm not looking directly for customers. I'm putting my emphasis more on looking for strategic partners who can refer me client their clients. Because like, for example, like a, a web developer, web designer is a very good strategic partner. Like I, sometimes I go out of my way to look for web developers or web designers and I don't do what they do. Uh, and here's the thing, like they might have clients that have problems with their CRM. And so they refer me business to their clients. I might do CRM work for my client, develop a good relationship with them and realize that, you know what, your website is not that good. It could improve. That's not my skill set. I stick to my lane and I say, you know what? I know John, he's a good web developer, web designer. You should talk to him. So that's what they're fair for. We could be really good referral partners for one another. I could generate business for him and he could generate business for me because we're doing something that's very complimentary where we could provide value to our respective clients. So that's the one thing I, I tell people that that's the one piece of advice I would tell people to, to look out for. Don't go into a networking meeting looking for a direct uh, client. Look for your strategic partners that want to support you, where you could share each other's respective clientele. Yeah, I've found the exact same thing because let's say I go in pitch our service and then next, if there's multiple breakout rooms, the next one I go in pitch the podcast, everybody wants to be on the podcast all of a sudden. Everybody wants to speak to you <laughs> because, it, well, it's not like that whole pitching to clients. It just leaves some sort of feeling in, in people's mouths. At the end of the day, you're leading off with give me something. Yeah. If we really break it down into like simple principles. And with a podcast or strategic relationship, it's more how can I help you in a way? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. How, how, yeah. You're right. You're leading with a message. How could I help you and give you more exposure? And people automatically see that. And when I do my, my networking, I always end on, uh, I emphasize. I'm looking to connect with people that really want to take the time where we learn about each other so that we can see how we could contribute to each other's success. And they say, Oh, this person is that. And, and it kind of eliminates the people that, that just want to sell directly to me on a one-on-one. -on -one. I'm kind of naturally saying, don't talk to me. If you're going to sell to me, I'm telling people, I want to talk to you. If you want to, if we want to have a two-way relationship, get to know each other and support one another and contribute to each other's growth. And I always say that in, in, in part of my pitch all the time. And I emphasize that piece because then it eliminates the pitch slappers. No to mess in the future. Right. But Brandon just sat down and steal his shit. Everybody steal it because you're going to bring in better people in your one-on-ones. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm taking that. Uh, yeah, but when I'm editing to this, I, I have the time to write it down. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't have down. to do it. <laughs> exactly. I, I know I'm going to forget if I don't say it. So um, yeah. I'm, I'm make out loud notes to myself. Yeah. That's a, well, it's if you don't say it, it's re it's really not going to happen. Um, yeah. I also think like it's a big mistake if you go into a networking event and you don't pitch something. Mm -hmm. like, pitching your service is better than well pitching nothing. Yeah. Which is well a, a more common mistake nearly nowadays because it at least at events I go to it seems like people are are too scared to pitch anything. Yeah, yeah, you know it's it's funny. I'm laughing because about a few months ago uh, I was at a networking event and the guy wasn't pitching anything. He's just saying something along the lines of, "Yeah, I'm just here, you know, having a good time. I just do what I do and." You know, if you want to talk to me, let's have a conversation. And I'm like, what the hell is this? Like, <laughs> I don't want to talk to this guy. I, I want to do business. Like, you know, I go to a networking event to do business and to create good, strong business relations with people. 
this guy just not giving a message about what he does you know i i, I don't want to talk to him <laughs> well there's <laughs> there's many other do, like... <laughs> there's many other ways of showcasing you just vibes okay. <laughs> yeah he was fully got... showcasing his relaxed vibes or whatever but like hey man like i need to know what you do so that i could see if i could support you and have a conversation around like how we could do business together in some capacity you know <laughs> yeah i could put like a viking helmet on that would tell you that i'm just vibes but i, I could also picture something <laughs> I, I'm, I'm saying that because I, I i think i'm generally gonna do it i i, I want to have like a real metal helmet helmet and yeah. put it on and then <laughs> way, just now i just i want to see people's reaction when that just pops out of the news like what <laughs> Well, if if there's one thing you want to do in networking is it's making yourself unique. I think it's one yeah. of the points I want to to lead on. The worst thing yeah. that can happen is nobody remembers you, and that is very important. Making yourself unique and yeah, make yourself unique initially, but then make yourself uh, unique even after you meet and develop that relationship with that person. Because that's how I've been able to create strong relationships where where I have a system in place and people say, "Wow, you're really organized." And they remember me and that makes me unique to, in terms of like me being on the ball, me being organized, me being making making effective connections, me remembering things about them. And I'm able to remember these things about them because I have a CRM and a system in place to actually help me to become more efficient. And that's been able that's enabled me to uniquely identify myself from people that do something similar to me or whatnot, or just for me to uniquely identify myself amongst the crowd of people or whatnot you know, by, by being efficient, being attentive to people's needs, remembering what they do, uh, what, the, how they do it. And, you know, like, here's the thing, like when I'm doing a one-on-one -on -one with somebody, here's the other thing that I do. This is another level of detail amongst the data guy <laughs> personality that I have. So when I talk to somebody in my CRM, I have something that that's called tags. Basically it's just keywords associated with each contact. So when I'm talking to somebody, I'll say, Oh, this person is health oriented. So I've type in health oriented in my list of tags associated with that particular person or they're purpose driven type in purpose driven or their the person personalized service i'll type in so all those keywords all those positive keywords that i'm typing about that particular individual and adding to their profile is adding to their engagement score as well and i'll say i'll say and often i'm talking to somebody i'll put in like a, a keyword that says salesy they get negative points I'll put in salesy no, meaning they're not salesy, so then they get plus points. So there's so many different factors that I take in consideration to, when scoring people. So I'm scoring people as I'm talking to them. <laughs> <laughs> well, the system is scoring them based on the keywords I'm putting in about them. The positive keywords get positive points. The negative keywords get negative points. So at mm. every, every interaction... Would, would a Viking helmet get plus or minus points? Would a Viking helmet get... I, I would probably put... Um, I would probably put a keyword like I would just probably put like the, my keyword would be personality, and that because <laughs> personality you, you'll get plus points. Okay, yeah. good. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. glad to. Hear, otherwise, I might have to sail to America and change that. Convince you yeah. otherwise. Yeah, find, but then if you if you have a, if you have the Viking helmet on and you try to sell to me, then I'll put in salesy so that cancels out your mm. personality mm. points. <laughs> is there any other important bits of advice you think we haven't talked about? Uh, want any to other leave bits, audience of, bits of advice? Um, oh, let, no, let, let's let's say ahead. tips. People don't like advice, so let's say tips. The main thing is, I would say, in order to to grow your business and, and streamline and and continue to expand, like you need to have a system in place. Uh, in order to be able to have, you need to have a system in place to automate or streamline all those manual procedures that you do, you know, because people get so stuck in the weeds of t doing like data entry type stuff or Excel spreadsheets uh, and all these different things or whatnot. It takes time away from their biggest differentiator, which is their personality and their time to actually have engagement and conversations with their customers, prospects, and networking partners. The reason why I like CRMs and I use a CRM and I, I have my clients use CRMs is because I look at their systems and find out what things are very manual 
And then I, I say, you know what, you could actually automate and streamline this with streamline this with a CRM. So therefore, it'll free up more time for you to have more engagement time with all your business contacts. Like that's the goal. Like I want to take those manual work procedures that you do, automate it with a CRM. So now you have more time to engage with all your business contacts, because that engagement is what's going to generate business for you. It's going to differentiate yourself from the rest of the other people that are doing something similar to you. It's your personality and you out being out there by having those conversations and creating connections with people that's going to allow you to grow your business. And so I want more people to have more time to focus on the relationship building of your business because you are the biggest differentiator in your business. Just sure. I love yeah. that. Personality. Yeah. Yeah, person <laughs> personality. Yeah, love your personality. <laughs> it does, I mean, it does. Like, I, okay, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I went to school for computer information systems. Like, when I got into the corporate world, I don't think I had the best personality because I was a typical IT guy. Like, I, I didn't never picked up the phone. I never liked doing, doing meetings or leading meetings. I just wanted to do my work and go home. So I was very antisocial. But, you know, I hung out with, like, family and friends and people that I initially already knew. Uh, but then by me quitting my job, it forced me to have to sell myself, you know, and have a personality. <laughs> so yeah, over time, I, I developed that personality of being engaging with people, asking inquisitive questions or whatnot. That's been practiced and worked on. Like, I didn't have this. I didn't have this before. Like, I, I didn't know how to go about talking to people and was very awkward because if I stuck in that industry in the computer world, I, I wouldn't have been as open as I am today. And I'm glad I did because it made me just a better person for it in terms of combining personality with technology uh, to help other people. And that, that I, I really like the combination of, you know, uh, creating good relationships with CRMs and with CRMs, they are using technology. And a lot of people say, oh, if you use a CRM, you're, using, you're losing human touch. No, you're actually not. I teach people how to use a CRM to strengthen that human touch with the people in their network. Stren I mean, strengthen that human touch with more people in your network. Yeah, you could not use a CRM and create good connections. But there's only so many people that you're going to remember and create good connections with. When you have a CRM, you're able to scale and grow that population of people that you're going to create genuine relationships with. And I teach people how to do that. And I like doing that because I want more people to connect. I want more people to generate business. Yeah, it, we we have to well get money in the door to actually run a business. Yeah, and a, and a great way of doing that is well, add enough value. Yeah, then eventually uh, somebody will will pay you. Yeah, add enough value, create a strong relationship, and be very strategic over the people that you do meet and have one on ones. The goal is, I mean, yeah, we all. It's cool to make friends, but like, yeah, at the same time while making friends, you want to be able to see how you guys could do business together in some capacity. Yeah. 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 So next networking meeting you get off on, make sure to make them your friend, but also ask them <laughs> how you can well, either do business together in the future or how you could help their business by introducing them to a strategic partner. Yes, you got it. You learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for coming on brandon it yeah. was an absolute blast and where should people check you out if they want to get to know the healthy data guy yeah i mean you could just go to healthydataguy.com and i'll i'll send some information there's another one called go.healthydataguy.com slash brandon drake because you could see just a whole profile about me but I could share with I could share with you and you could probably I'm assuming you have like notes in the when you record this or whatnot. So you could put it in the so uh quote unquote show notes. <laughs> yeah, it'll be down below up. The easiest it, to the, to... Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'll, you put it in the notes too. So I'll share with you the, that information. Thanks for watching our content. We put it out there to help people and we sure hope it helped you. If you're the type of person that recognizes that you need help in your business in order to increase your revenue. You should book that 30 minute call with us. Two reasons. One, it's free for you. And two, it gives us a chance to get to know you a little bit. We can figure out a direction to steer you in to help you out. Maybe that's working with us. Maybe it's not. Either way, book that call and talk to us.